I'm obsessed with politics. No, I, are you really? I'm, so I'm more obsessed with mind. Rand Paul because yeah, I'm so I'm so disappointed in him. He drives me up the wall. And I know. I know this about and you. And then he I does know. good things sometimes, which just goes to show why I'm so frustrated with him because I know he knows better when he does all the horrible things that yeah. he does. And and let's get this straight. He's crossed the line on extremely important things. Iran, Israel, Palestine, the war against the Islamic State, military spending. I mean, we're not, you know, when Ron ran, he said, listen, I say abolish the empire and spend that money shoring up the deficit in Medicaid. Right, like I'm not for that. I'm against Medicaid, and I know Ron Paul is too. But he's right. saying, "Look, how about we compromise? We stop all the mass murder and spend a little bit more on pills for grandma. Is that a fair compromise?" Rand is saying, "Man, we're going to have to cut this social spending so that we can afford to shore up the empire, and that's not okay. Mm. It's not okay at all." And then he turns around and he goes, "Hey, look at me. I'm Mr. Constitution on the Patriot Act. Why did I ever tell you about that time that James Madison made a point about the limits of power?" And it's like, "You bastard, man. Who the hell are you anyway?" Or, you know, we know who he is, but why not just And and here's the thing about it too is all of this is about appeasing Israel's fifth column in America. I don't know why people are afraid to just talk about this. The neoconservatives and the Israel lobby represent the interests of a foreign power. And the neoconservatives dominate the brains of every single Republican apparatchik in this entire society. And they say exactly what they're supposed to say. And no matter how much Rand Paul tries to suck up to Israel and their fifth column in America, everybody knows he's Rand Paul, Ron Paul's son. And so they still hate him anyway. It's well, like they hate him anyway. the Nazis. It gets him absolutely nowhere. And all it does is it makes everybody who used who loves his dad and wants so badly to support him say, listen, I can't trust this guy whatsoever. If he's going to flip flop around to please Sheldon Adelson, the casino magnet, then I don't want nothing to do with him, man. He's filthy. <laughs> I don't and understand so, Adelson, really. I mean, that's a weird thing. But it does it not make you a little bit sympathetic when you see the neocons, you know, railing against against Rand? You know, well, it just uh, make, no, it makes me matter. OK, I'll really? tell you a story. Stop me if I if I told you this one. That's already. fine. Yeah. So, so Rand um, he got in trouble because at, right after he announced he was running, he was short with a couple of female interviewers who accused yeah. him of flip flopping, which of course uh -huh. he had flip flopped, going from "Come on, Iran's not a threat" to "Oh, Iran is a threat" because that's what Sheldon Adelson and the Israel lobby want me to say, which was pathetic. And when they called him out, he tried to call them liars and pretend like that never happened and that he never said the things that we can all Google and know that he said because he's such an idiot. He's such – that's the other thing I don't like about him. His father's such a kind gentleman. You just want to hug him. And Rand seems like the kind of guy who would be very short with his waitress and is very stuck up and, you know, wraps his sweater around when he plays tennis and is a real prick. You know, like the bad guy on Caddyshack 2 or something kind of a guy, you know? <laughs> I just don't like him. And anyway – so, um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, ah, oh, shit. See, I lost my train. No, of I know. I know. You, you know. That was a good soliloquy though. I mean, yeah, yeah okay. no, um, it was, uh, what on, uh, oh, the flip flopping on Iran and whatever. Right. What'd I say? I have no idea, Jeff, where the hell I but was. No, you were talking about his interviews with these women. Oh, but he the was interviews with the women. I was telling an anecdote. The interviews with the women. So. Now, the idiots, the PC police said, oh, he's a sexist and he's picking on these women because because right. he hates women. OK, so that's stupid. Right. I'm only talking about that part of the story because that explains why he went on Megyn Kelly, because she was going to let him off the hook. Look at me. I'm a woman and I say he's OK. It was Megyn Kelly's line, you know, helping him out, rehabilitating Rand, the man for just a minute. OK, that was right. why she had him on. But while he was there, she hit him with Charles Krauthammer, the notorious neoconservative, wrong about everything ever since he, he was a speech writer for Walter Mondale, the former Trotskyite commie rat. And anyway, <laughs> uh, so Krauthammer said, well, Rand Paul's a sissy. Rand Paul is a Democrat. Rand right. Paul isn't tough enough. Rand Paul is like no, Hillary Clinton and I know. Barack Obama. I mean, you've, you've seen these attacks, right? I mean, the Washington right. Post. Which so now the story now gets good right here. Conservatives is right. in against Rand Paul every day, right? Right, right. But so here's where the story gets good is he's still that thin skinned, right? He's not a sexist. He goes out after Krauthammer the same way he went after those women, right? He's very thin skinned. And so, but 
instead of pandering and laying down on his belly and saying, oh, no, I swear I hate Iran just as much as you want me to, Charles Krauthammer, like he usually does, he didn't know what to say. So he resorted to telling the truth. And he said, oh, yeah, well, Krauthammer sided with Obama and Hillary on support for the rebels in Libya and in Syria. And look what that got us. A bunch right. of Al-Qaeda spread like disease all right. over so North like he's telling the truth. Right. So, he, so under pressure from a horrible neocon, he lashed out, forgot his talking points, pandering and crawling before Israel, and went ahead and said what he wanted to say, which was he was good on that. When they wanted to support Al-Qaeda in Libya, he said we shouldn't. And they, they insisted, and, and the neocons and Obama did it. And when he said we shouldn't support Al-Qaeda in Syria, they insisted, and the neocons and Obama did it. So now they want to accuse him of being like Obama, and then he turns it right around. You're like Obama, only worse. Your only problem with Obama is he wasn't even as evil as you. So now this is a Rand Paul that can actually get work done. This is a Rand Paul that if he goes out there and fights for a year and a half and says, forget all this warmongering, America. Follow me. I'm leading you to peace, a return to normalcy, well, an end to the empire. We're not right. doing this anymore. I am not lying like FDR when I say I am not going to send your sons off to any foreign wars. And if you really want to let Charles Krauthammer decide whether your son lives or dies, then by all means, vote for Marco Rubio or Jeb Bush. If you want to live in a normal country and in a normal time, then vote Paul. Simple. And then win. Right. He could. And the only way he could win. It, this is America, somewhat a little bit democratic system in a way. The only way that someone who is not the tool of the foreign lobbies and the arms industry and the big bankers who could possibly win in a million years would be if he did everything he could to rally the entire base of the mass of the population of this society. All non-voters and voters too. Everybody, you have to help. Bum rush the primaries. This is all of us against the war party. Right? Only in a real fight could he ever dream of getting the nomination? Could he ever dream of b being the president of the United States? He thinks he's going to crawl on his hands and knees and pander before Israel and they're going to allow him to be the president? That is the dumbest damn thing I've ever heard. And so, and here's the other thing too. He's half a dilettante too. He doesn't do the work in the reading like his father does at all, but it doesn't matter. All he has to do is basically tell the truth and he kicks their ass. They're so bad on Iran. They're bad on Israel. They're bad on Syria. They're bad on Libya. They're bad on Ukraine. They're crazy. The neocons are wrong about everything. Rand Paul ought to be able to kick their ass with one hand and no problem like Jackie Chan, you know, like in the Matrix, the one guy versus a hundred guys. Bring on every neocon, bring on every Republican nominee. You're all wrong about everything. You're wrong about Mexico. You're wrong about Honduras. You're wrong about South Africa. You're wrong about everything. Bring it. And he won't do that. And so he's going to end up just another also ran like Rubio and the rest of these losers, like, like Mike Huckabee. But uh, what if he didn't? I mean, what if actually he has a chance? I mean, wouldn't you consider that? Well, that's why I'm hollering, right? It's because I think he does. I yeah. think if he would if he would learn the lesson from his victory over Krauthammer. I mean, believe me, Jeff, if you'd seen this, if Krauthammer himself had been there, it wasn't just Megyn Kelly quoting him, but Krauthammer himself had been there, Rand still would have just whooped him. Like Krauthammer didn't have nothing to say to Rand's awesome response. It was really great. Yeah. So all he had to do was be honest and tell the truth and act like his dad a little bit and just kick their ass. 